Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back here for the subjective listening results and I'll preface this that we all have our biases but no, I'm not making money off this. I'm not trying to sell you a product. This isn't something for sale. This is just one of my personal do-it-yourself amps that I did a video series on. And this is another little amp that I bought and did some very slight modifications to. And then we have the unmodified A12. I will say that we tried some different tubes. We actually took the output tubes out of this amp that sounds fantastic and put them in this amp. So there are no good tubes, and I had two different sets of 12AX7s that I've used in other preamps that we tried in here, and honestly didn't really make much of any difference. It did change the sound a little bit, but we'll get into that in a minute. So, in case you don't want to watch the whole video, unfortunately, guys, this amp sounds terrible. I... I mean, maybe if you're coming from like a Bluetooth speaker, feeding it from your phone with op amps and a little, you know, four inch speaker facing up or something in a plastic case, whatever, that you might go, wow, this sounds so great. And it probably does compare to something like that. But if you're comparing AB, this amp, to another tube amp, using the same speakers and the same input source, this amp's a mess. The bass is basically just transformed into rumble. There's so much distortion, it sounds like a thunderstorm. I mean, it yeah, it still kind of shakes the room and stuff, but if there's any kind of detail in the bass, it's just smeared into one glob of sound. The same thing's true in the mid-range. If you're listening to something like, you know, Kenny G, smooth jazz, alto sax kind of thing, I'm sure it probably does sound okay. But it, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's almost like you've put a guitar fuzz box between the source and the speaker. There's the reverb-like sound. It's just... You know, maybe some people think that that sounds musical or, and I'm sure it sounds very different than a solid state amp. And for somebody that's never heard a tube amp before might go, wow, that's cool. That, that's got a different sound to it. But I don't think that's the total goal of the tube amp is to color the music to the point where it doesn't sound anything like it does if it's played on anything else. I feel like with tube amps like this one that has, you know, one, maybe two percent of distortion at the very high end of the uh, power range, that you are getting some tube goodness. But when you're at, you know, seven to ten percent plus distortion and you're basically clipping the music it just doesn't sound good guys I mean I mean the these EL34 tubes in this amp are operating so far away from any sort of optimal operating point that of course changing the tubes sounds different and yeah when I took these tubes out and put these in they sounded different but they sounded equally distorted and that's to me, not the goal of a tube amplifier. And then I plugged in this little $300 Noob Sound 6P1 that, yeah, this one's been modified. It's had one resistor moved, one resistor added, and I think one capacitor moved and one capacitor replaced. So we've got maybe $5 worth of parts and you know, 20 minutes worth of soldering, and this amp destroys this amp up to one watt. 
I think 1.2 watts is where this, when, you know, the distortion starts going up. And even up to like 1.5, you know, just shy of 2 watts, this is putting out cleaner power and it sounds better. This amp is not capable electrically of putting out more than 3 watts. It just, it can't. When you look at the scope pattern, it's turning music into square waves at that point. It's no longer amplifying. So don't kid yourself thinking this has got a lot more power. It doesn't. So we do have work to do. And, you know, three, five videos from now, I might be saying, hey guys, after replacing these two resistors and this thing, you know, now this amp really sings. We may be there, but out of the box, this amp shouldn't be sold. It's very deceptively marketed. At 1% distortion, it's making 0.05 watts. You heard that right, 0.05 watts of power. And anything over that, it jumps to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5%. By 1.1 watts, it's making 6% distortion, and they advertise this as a 6 watt under 1% distortion amplifier, and that is not what you're buying. So anyway, back to what it sounds like, you know, and you that have been following my channel know I'm not somebody that obsesses on distortion numbers. And I'll make excuses for an amplifier having a lot of distortion if it sounds good. Like again, this amp is not a distortion queen. You know, it's when it's at the one to two watt range, you get, I mean, it's a horizontal line going from one to two percent distortion. And then once it gets up to about five watts, it turns up. This amp's got like a 45 degree line on the distortion where it just ramps up from, you know, headphone listening volume. And by the time you get to something that'll drive the speakers, it sounds like the, I mean, I don't know how many of y'all are old enough to remember when car radios had reverb. That's what's going on with this amp. It sounds like you've got the reverb turned on. And I know there's some popular hi-fi influencers that have waxed poetic about what a great value this is and, you know, rich sound and, you know, I don't know what they're hearing. I... You know, and I know some of these same people are the ones that'll tell you that, you know, these $5,000 power cables will transform your high pot fi system. So take that with a grain of salt when you're listening to what some of these other people are saying. They're the same ones that'll tell you that the little four, $500 stands that you put on your speaker cables need to break in before you can hear the difference. I'm... <sighs> So I know this is going to sound like a rant, but I've already seen some people getting super defensive about this. And, you know, I hope people will realize that their personal purchasing decisions are not the same thing as who they are as a human being and can disconnect themselves from that. I mean, I see the same thing in, you know, when people start talking about photography gear or their motorcycles, or whatever, they become so personally invested in their purchase decisions, they take it as a personal insult if you don't like what they purchased and they decided that they like. And people get a bias when they buy something on Amazon that they're not going to test it against two or three or four other amplifiers. They're listening to this thing without anything to compare it to, and because they chose it, they think it sounds good. And it's kind of like that Sun Audio, J.C. Morrison schematic that people use for 300 Bs. I bought into the hype. I built an amp using that. But I knew that it sounded bad. And I changed it up, came up with something good, came up with a way to fix the 850, which... Everyone that's tried my mods on the A50 are like, OMG, this thing is like a totally different amplifier and it actually sounds good now. 
And they thought it sounded good before. So anyway, don't want to make this video too long. I think y'all got the idea that this is not a good value. And I don't know what it's going to take to fix this yet. But I know the parts for this amp that sounds really nice cost the same as this amp does out the door. And I just can't believe that they can sell something for the same price as the parts that sounds as good or better. That's just not reality. So if you want to buy something out of the box, this little Noob Sound 6P1 sounds pretty good with some efficient bookshelf speakers. And especially after you do the $10 quick mods to it, it's a great sounding little lamp that's $200 cheaper than this one is. And if you need the power that this amp's supposed to have, this one's not delivering it. And so you need to spend some more money, do some more research, and probably end up spending more like a grand to get a good tube amp that's going to put out six watts of clean power and that actually sounds good. So... I'm going to wrap this up here. Hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. And clearly, we're going to be diving into this thing soon to see if we can salvage this into a decent hi-fi amp. Have a great day.